Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Raquel from Filmmaker U at Filmmaker U. We create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at filmmakeru.com or, of course, follow us on Twitter at filmmaker underscore U. Every week we interview film professionals, and this week I'm joined by uh, the editors of Apple TV Plus's uh, Blackbird, Rob Bonds and Jonathan Alberts. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess my first question for you guys is, uh, how did you guys get involved with the the show? And then how did you determine uh, the breakup of who would tackle which episodes? So I guess I'll start. I was recommended by a friend, uh, I think is, uh, and, um, and so then um, it all happened fast and then slow. Like I got, uh, I got the scripts like Thursday evening, I think. And I read them after dinner and then I read them all. I was up to like three and then I had my zoom with them the next uh, day. And, uh, and it was kind of funny. I got into the room early and Dennis let me in and it was just me and Dennis for the beginning part. And we just started talking about movies and stuff and, and the scripts and we just kind of connected. And then the other uh, producers joined a little later and it was like, we kind of instantly had a connection. That's how I sort of got started. And in terms of the episode breakup, that was just sort of predetermined, you know, in a way. Uh, Jonathan, what would you say? Uh, well, I was actually recommended by a friend as well. And I think I started a little bit before Rob did. So I already I was already on episodes two, four, and six, but uh, a friend of mine had read the scripts and was on another job and he said, oh, this show is pretty interesting. And uh, and it kind of went through there, but uh, which is not, you know, it's not always typical of how, how you get a job, but sometimes. So it kind of worked out that way. I'm going to interrupt this interview for one second. We want to thank Pixelview, one of our sponsors. They're a streaming solution for filmmakers. Pixelview lets you stream your work to remote clients for easy collaboration, and it works with both on-set teams and post-production teams. With built-in video chat, you can discuss and make changes in real time and stream directly from your editing software. Or you can use the hardware encoder to stream from DaVinci Resolve or the camera on set. See the promo code and the link in the video description below. Because you guys are, it's two editors on one series, but I'm always interested in hearing how uh, you, you sort of like to tackle your cuts or how you like to get into your cuts. Like, you know, some editors I've talked to, they put all the shots into the timeline. They start weeding things out. Others are very specific of what they put in the timeline. So I'm wondering how you guys like to tackle uh, your edits when you when you first start a, a show. Um. Well, uh, for me, I mean, I think, you know, it's it's pretty similar in every show. I watch all of the dailies that come in. I read the scene and I make selects. So I kind of start by, you know, just watching everything and kind of pulling things out that I like. And those things that I like might be things that are, you know, interesting performance. It could just be some interesting audio. It could be some interesting visual shot. But I don't really put a lot of rules on why I might like it. If it's just something that, you know, something that hits me in a certain way, then I'll put it into a timeline and I'll create a selects reel. Um, and then I'll watch that selects reel. And I'll usually cut that down by about half and kind of start to like put it in a bit of a, an order potentially. If it's a long, if it's a big scene, I'll start to order it a little bit and keep it in the select. So it's just this rough outline. And then from there, I kind of, depending on how much footage, I'll cut it down again and I'll create like a super selects reel. Um, and those are for, you know, big chunkier scenes. For smaller ones, I, you know, I might do a small selects reel, but to me, it's a process of whittling it down. And when you try to like almost organize things into like gold, silver, and bronze in a way, like what's the stuff that really interests me? Is it stuff that, is it a performance thing? Is it something that, um, just catches my eye and I'll start actually cutting from there and then, you know, just start pulling together and, and it's, you know, slowly starts to take shape, but that's kind of how I get into it. How about yourself, Rob? Yeah. Uh, pretty similar. I mean, I pull mm -hmm. selects of whatever my favorite moments are for, and similar to Jonathan, it's, 
you know, it could be an emotional moment. It could be a performance. It just could be something that just is interesting for whatever reason, uh, visually, audio wise. And I keep that in a series of selects in the bin. And then, um, and then as I, I just refine, you know, and it just keep, keep going back through it. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that is more or less the process on the bigger scenes and the little ones. It's kind of always the same way. And we had a lot of long scenes in this, you know, a lot of 12 pagers and whatnot. And so then, you know, I'm looking to build into certain lines, build into certain moments and then reset and and, and do that again. And so when you're looking at those moments, sometimes I'm, I'm I have an eye as I'm structuring it to where I want to be for a certain line, uh, you know, once I've seen everything. And then I try and craft it, you know, kind of build my way into those. Now, what, what were the, because this is a, deals with a dark, uh, with dark content or dark tone. So uh, what was the, I guess the, the, how much range did you get from the actors in the delivery? Was it like where, I, I don't know where I'm going with this question, but I'm wondering like, when you're looking at the rushes, was there a large range that you could play with or was, was it mostly focused in on, on one area? It was a reasonable range, I would say. I mean, Paul certainly, you know, obviously there's the shooting schedule and they have to move fairly quickly, but mm-hmm. even as such, you use, I usually got three things out of Paul, sort of like, uh, you know, a low, medium and, and over here. Uh, and, uh, and so you you had flexibility, and I would say um, that uh, Taryn also there was a, a, a pushing of it in, in later takes, you know, so that uh, maybe you'd start. They seem to start more or less kind of as on the page, and then you know some later ones they would, depending on the needs of the scene, push it a little bit farther. Mm-hmm. At least that was my experience, Jonathan. Yeah, I mean, I think there was, there's certainly a range. And I think, you know, always with good actors and performances, there's a range, even that, even if that range is a narrow range, it's one that's, you know, gives an opportunity to really construct a performance and actually, you know, see it evolve. So with Paul, I mean, certainly there was stuff that was bigger, but, you know, his performance in a way, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a performance. And with that performance, there certainly were times where you could really push it to to the max. And I think that was part of the, you know, was part of, I think what, you know, it's what Rob and I talked about a bit, but with, with Larry's character, I mean, it was making choices about how big to go with it and when I think with um, Taryn as well. I mean, I think there was a lot of range in his performance. And again, it was, it was all about choosing those things. So so I think even though the content was dark, there's still a lot of play within that, for sure. Yeah, and Paul did a great job of doing all those sort of odd physical things. I mean, there are so many things I'm thinking of uh, now, episode five, where he's talking to his shrink and he's talking about um, Jimmy and his friendship with Jimmy. And he does this kind of thing with his, with his throat and he kind of like, and he's, th- you know, he just gave you a lot of little textures that I thought were really fascinating and disarming and allowed you to kind of access him in a, in a you know, he was a non-threatening, scary person in a weird way. And, um, and I loved all of those little textures that he brought to the table, but they're really interesting. Well, it's funny because he, he looks very much like um, one of the actors in Letterkenny, um, which is a comedy show up here in Canada. And so the whole, like when I look at him, I can't think about the like I think about the sweet guy that is in Letterkenny. <laughs> so it's very disturbing when you see him uh, play off. What um, I can is I'm always interested in hearing. Like, is there a particular scene that uh, was really difficult for you guys to tackle individually, but uh, you're really proud of the the outcome of it? I have one that comes to mind, but do you want to go first, Jonathan? Sure. Um... So I, uh, in episode six, I had the final confrontation between Larry and Jimmy. And uh, it was an interesting scene. I mean, it had over, I think it had about three and a half hours of footage for, I think, what ended up to be a 13 minute scene. It's a long scene and it does a lot of things in that scene. And of course, it's the, you know, 
you know, kind of this biggest kind of con it's the, the confrontation of the entire show. So that was a beast to get into. And it was, it was super fun to cut it, but it took, just took a long time because what goes on in that scene, I mean, I think when I constructed it, it was, you know, it's 13 minutes of a lot of different things happening. And there was, you know, three or four different music cues going on, but Larry and the way that conversation moves from Jimmy coming in and looking at the maps, clocking the maps, the maps being folded up. And then, you know, this slow burn and revelation of Jimmy starting to understand that, oh God, like, you know, Larry is, you know, Larry is who Larry is and Larry revealing that. So for me, I think I was really lucky because when I was cutting that scene, I think there was, I think there was a lot going on with episode one and I think they were focusing on that. So I got like a lot of time to work on that episode, which scenes like that, that are these big beasts of scenes, they just take a lot of time. And it, I remember I was tackling it, tackling it and probably for like a whole week, I think that just to get, you know, something together. But I was proud of that scene because it also was one that was, you know, it's, it's really well written. It has a very strong voice, but there are also things in that scene that you have to choose what is the moment in this scene that you're really going to build to? And I think there's a moment when Larry basically says, you know, the whole point of these girls was to be seen, which, you know, I didn't really understand until I was actually in the footage. And once you're in the footage and you're kind of pulling around the material and you're really starting to, to figure it out, you kind of understand, okay, where's the emphasis going to go? How am I going to cut the scene? Because there's a lot of moments in that scene where you could choose, but it wasn't necessarily entirely clear from the writing. And once it's like with a lot of scenes, once you get it in the cutting room and you start working with it, you think like, oh, you know what? I'm going to build this moment. So I was pretty proud of that scene and it was a really fun scene to cut. Interesting. How about yourself, Rob? Um, for me, I think the the toughest one, as Jonathan alluded to, is uh, episode one, there's a scene where um, Greg Kinnear finds Jessica Roach's body. And as originally scripted, it was one scene with like, um, you find the skeleton and it was, and he flashes back to his daughter playing flag football. And it was this whole thing, which then once you did that, it was a little, it was just too much. So um, we then um, finding a way to do that, we, you know, I made an alt right away and then finding the language to do that more subtly. And we ended up doing actually a little bit of additional photography to help do that with uh, the shot of the shoe and to kind of make that a more subtler meditation and not some sensationalized thing because it's such an important moment for the entire series and getting that right. I think it took a couple of iterations and, and a bit of reflection as Jonathan says, you know, I mean, you, you sit there and you chew on it for a bit and you come at it from a bunch of different angles. And I think that that really paid off in that moment. And a big credit to Dennis there, it's like, just because, you know, he always looked at stuff with fresh eyes and it was like, you know, just because he wrote it one way when he saw it, he's very quick to be like, oh no, we got to pivot. And, and, you know, and then, and, uh, and he really fun to collaborate with and coming up with how we would tackle that and handle that delicately so that, um, you know, so it had the impact that it did. Now you, you, you talked about coming at it from different angles. Was there a particular uh, version that you cut that you really liked it, but it just didn't fit the tone of the show or it didn't fit the, the story, the way it was going? Um, no, I mean, the one that I liked was a little less, um, I didn't really want to show the skeleton. I thought less there visually was more and the, um, you know, the, the shot of the daughter was just sort of too much. So there, I think um, there wasn't one, that, the one that I liked actually ended up as the final one um, and and getting there and, and bringing back that shot of Jessica from the opening on the bicycle and, and putting that back in there as kind of a little meditation on her. Um, yeah, that was my favorite iteration. And so we just, we eventually got there um, and that was that was nice. Now, uh, you sort of, we've alluded to it, you said, you know, like you talked about the skeleton, what have mm -hmm. you, and it was it being a bit much. Um, so, like I said earlier, this is like dark content. So how do you 
I guess, clean your palate? Or how do you keep yourself uh, from getting too depressed <laughs> when you're working on heavy <laughs> content, especially something that's based on true story or has true events, I guess is what it was listed as. Yeah, it was it was tough for me just on a personal level because, you know, my kids are, you know, I have two daughters and they're about the age of Larry's victims. So, and we're working from home and, uh, you know, and so the stuff is, you know, like they're popping into the room and I got to turn off the monitors and, and, you know, um, so, but, um, I mean, for me, well, one talking to Jonathan, like, I mean, the, there was, even though we're all isolated, we did a lot of communicating and that was really, you know, you miss not being in an office together and uh, where you can kind of like just bond over the footage and, and what's going on and how you're approaching the scene. But we had a really, I feel a wonderful communication where we just kind of like just chatted, you know, yeah. almost, I think almost every day. And that was really pleasant and nice. And then, you know, the other thing, there is a certain joy that, you know, in the dark, in your avid room, looking at the footage, when you've got these great performances, the, um, it just, that part was really fun. Yeah. How about yourself, Jonathan? Um, it's interesting, you know, because I think that question comes up a lot when you're cutting material that is, you know, darker, it turns out, but I think it, for me, it's, I mean, I just, I love the editing so much that the content itself it's it's you're kind of working to create this you know you're working to create something that doesn't i suppose even though it's based i mean it's totally it's it, the story is uh true i don't get caught up so much in the darkness of what's going on i think you know in a credit to dennis i think what i liked so much about the material was that it didn't, it was never, uh, you didn't see like a bunch of girls dying. You didn't see, it, it was, it, it basically stayed away from all of the kind of true crime tropes that end up, you know, in, in shows these days. And I, it's just not my thing. I'm, I'm, I don't like horror films really that much. I don't like, I don't like any of that kind of gory stuff. And for me, I think, you know, because this was more of a meditation on masculinity, on, all of these things that are, you know, that, you know, Dennis had written into the script and the things that kind of came out, the themes. For me, it's just like, if I don't get super dark and down thinking about the content because the actually putting it together is like really actually pretty enjoyable. Um, so I don't know, there's kind of a, a weird separation with that somehow. All right, so if, if, if it's enjoyable, what would you say was your favorite scene to cut? Uh... It's interesting, you know, favorite scenes is such an or odd most thing. fun. <laughs> I guess, uh, yeah. It would be a better way of phrasing it. I think maybe what I actually had a lot of fun in episode four, which is basically Larry and Jimmy uh, connecting and having all these flashbacks from childhood. And, you know, there's a lot of fun and interesting scenes. And, you know, there's scenes that are really fun and then you recut them 10 times and you're like, oh, that's less fun than I remember. Um, but, that episode was a pretty fun one to cut because it, you're coming back to all these childhood memories. And there was a really great montage that I really enjoyed cutting, which was a montage of um, Jimmy flashing back and you're kind of covering his childhood and his father being away all the time. And, you know, that was, that was a fun one to cut because I had a lot of uh, freedom to do what I wanted. I mean, there was stuff that was scripted, but it, my favorite thing to do is basically when I get footage and it's just like, I want it to feel, the director's like, I want it to feel like this. And there's really no necessarily like script there or there's like some script, but you basically get a bunch of footage. And that's the funnest thing for me is to put stuff together and be like, okay, it's like, I'm gonna make it feel like this. And you kind of discover it as you go along. So that whole montage, that sections in that, um, in that episode, there was some really fun stuff to work with. The same one with Jimmy going on the dates with, all the different girls flashback when he's with Rochelle in the bar. Like those are kind of fun because typically the stuff I cut, I'm not doing a ton of montage stuff. And so that was kind of fun for me. And you get to like, you know, really work with the music in a really big way. So those are, those are two examples. How about yourself, Rob? Um, for me, my favorite one was, well, 
all of episode five because we get into Jessica Roach from her point of view and we get to, you know, getting back to something Jonathan said earlier about how Dennis handled the material. I loved that, you know, that we're focusing on her life. And she says, I lived, you know, you can't unlive. And I, you know, I love that whole Jessica Roach arc in five, but my favorite scene to cut probably was the woodshop in five, which is very dark, the confession, but the performances there and the way that um, Joe Chappelle, the director and Natalie, our DP shot that, um, that was just so much fun to work on uh, because every, you know, I mean, it's beautifully, brilliantly written. It's disturbing, but it just, it builds in such a way that it was just, I could have worked on that thing over and over. Uh, it was just, it was a lot of fun and um, I never get tired of watching that. So that for me was my most fun one. Now I have one last question for you guys. What would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure TV show or film to watch? Go ahead, Rom. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, mine is just, is Goodfellas. I love Goodfellas. Uh, That's your guilty pleasure? It's a guilty pleasure because I watch it over and over and over and over and over. And, um, you know, and so. Why well, feel guilty about that movie? It's a great movie. It's a wonderful movie, but I mean, it's absurd that I kind of obsess on it. And I love, you know, I mean, all the times, those great scenes uh, in this show with Jimmy and his dad with Ray. And, you know, I remember talking to Dennis in the interview. I was like, just one time, I want you when you're when you're shooting Ray, to just have him do that Lufthansa heist thing where he's like, Jim! and he's banging on the wall in the shower. It's just like, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's probably... It's just, that's the movie, like, two in the morning, I'll be watching that movie in the living room and not getting the sleep I need. So <laughs> that's why it's in my guilty pleasure, yeah. How about yourself, uh, Jonathan? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't have a lot of guilty pleasure when yeah. I watch because I tend to, like, you know, I mean, I think the thing that I can watch over and over again, that is not something that I, I mean, I don't, I don't watch a ton of big comedies, but I, my one of my favorites is um, Talladega Nights, which nice. is like a brilliant, brilliant film. So I guess it's fair enough, Rob. It's like mine's really not so guilty either because I think it's a brilliant film. It's brilliantly structured. It's like such a great satire. There's so many great things about it, but maybe it's guilty because I can watch it over and over and over again and not get bored. Yeah, I should be advancing and watching a bunch of new stuff, but it's like, oh, the heck with it. I'm going back to something I love. I'm going to, yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, I, it's like a warm blanket, that movie. I know, it is a warm blanket. But, you know, I think there's like, yeah, I mean, I try to stay away from watching like total trash because I don't think it affects your editing very well when you watch it. <laughs> it seeps in, you're like, oh, have you seen that great movie? And I'm, firm, like, whoa, I'm, whoa. I'm a firm believer that if you watch too much garbage, it's just like, then, you know, you end up like having the taste of garbage. So. <laughs> You know, it's like eating junk food, it just affects your health. Yeah, totally. It's like bad music, you know. Who wants to listen to bad music? <laughs> you know? No. Nice. Well, thank you so much, guys, for letting me interview today. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. And that's it for this week, everyone. Make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com and of course on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching. Today's episode of Filmmaker U is brought to you by our sponsors, OWC. Go to owcdigital.com for all your filmmaking and computer needs. And it's also brought to you by our other sponsors, AJA. Make sure to check out AJA.com so that you can see how they can help you in your post-production needs.